Because he died, I live. But the biggest because was still yet to come. Three days later, that battle was won. Because he is who he said he is. Not just a martyr, not just a man. But the resounding crescendo in God's ultimate plan. The cause when I say, I am free, I am new. Because on that day, death, he passed through. He conquered the grave and everything changed. Because he is raised, I am no longer in chains, free from my sin and mortality. Because, because he, he rose, rose eternally. eternally. Well, happy Easter Shoreline Church. I hope you've been enjoying the worship today and you feel the presence of the Holy Spirit and the risen Lord Jesus Christ in your home right where you are. Whether you're a regular attender at Shoreline, you're with us for the first time, or maybe the last two or three weeks you've been becoming part of the Shoreline family, we're so glad you're here to celebrate the resurrected Jesus Christ with us. Well, I want to think today about, about because. Because Jesus rose from the dead, there's good news everything changes. There is good news because Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And here, here's the reality. Everyone loves good news. Everyone. And in a weird way, even more after getting bad news. Sometimes after we've had some bad news and we get good news, it feels like it's even better news. Here's an example. Imagine you, you're working in a workplace you enjoy and you and you're working, and you kind of hear through the grapevine, through other people talking, that there's going to be a, a sort of a, a downsizing, a restructuring, and you've heard through the grapevine that your job is going to go away. That's bad news. You don't know 100% it's true, but you've kind of heard that. And then you get called into your manager's office, and they say to you, okay, we need to let you know something. Your job in this restructure is gone, and your heart kind of drops, and you get that knot in your gut. They say, so your job's gone, but here's the good news we're going to actually give you a raise and a nicer office and a promotion, and you're moving to a new job that's even better. You've gone from the bad news to the good news. And that good news seems even better because you've just gone through the tunnel of the darkness of the bad news. We had someone on our staff recently get bad news and then good news. It went like this. Uh, this person on our staff uh, went to the doctor, ended up having blood tests, and got some very bad news about the condition of their blood and some potential implications for their own health and treatments. And, and as a staff, we started praying for her because this was really bad news. Then the doctor contacted her and said, oops, uh, we were reading the wrong blood test. That wasn't your diagnosis. You're fine. Well, <laughs> crazy, right? But awfully good news. And after the bad news, the good news seemed even better. Well, Easter's kind of like that. Easter weekend, on Good Friday, we remember that Jesus died on the cross, that he took our sins, that he, he took the punishment we deserved on himself. And if you love Jesus, it breaks your heart to know he went through all of that for you. But we celebrate the fact that he died in our place for our sins. And then today, Easter Sunday, we celebrate that he rose again, that there's good news after the bad news. Imagine you were one of the earlier fo early followers of Jesus in the first century, where, where you, had, you had left everything to follow Jesus. This is the situation of the early followers that Jesus faced. They left everything. They left their jobs, their family, their security to walk with and follow Jesus. I mean, they were all in. They were devoted, true believers. And then the very one they loved and they followed, Jesus was crucified. They see him die on a cross. They watch the spear thrust into his side. And the blood and the water comes out. They know he's dead. And, and, and he's crucified. He dies on the cross. And then three days have gone by. And nothing. He's still gone. He's still dead. Until they hear, he is risen. He's alive. Good news. But think about it. There was bad news, bad news, bad news, bad news. And then the good news came. And it changed everything. Well, this Easter... We're in a very unique season globally and nationally and probably very, very personally where, where I don't think there's one person listening right now, part of this service, that hasn't experienced some bad news. Bad news of the turmoil of our world. Bad news of people around our nation whose lives 
have ended because of this virus. Bad news economically of what's happening. I mean, there's been a lot of bad news in the last four weeks. But today, this Easter, in contrast to all that bad news that, that is still there and it's real, but in the midst of all of that, here's the question, do you need some good news? Does your heart long, could someone please give me good news that no one can take away? And the answer is yes, his name is Jesus. He brings good news. And I'm going to share five ways that the resurrection of Jesus is good news because he rose from the dead, because of what he did on the cross, when he, he died, he was buried, and he rose again on the third day. Because he rose again, there is good news for you. So here's the first good news I want you to hear today. Because Jesus rose from the grave, we have the good news of the gospel. The, good, the, the, the word gospel itself is, is, is built into it is this idea of good news, of hopeful news. Because Jesus died on the cross, because he rose again from the dead, we have the good news of the gospel, a gospel of life and light and hope. Uh, Howie Hugo was the founding pastor of Shoreline Church. If you were part of Shoreline more than 10 years ago, uh, you know Howie Hugo. And Howie had certain things that he would share uh, on, a, on a regular basis that were just things that were important for him and things that really connected for him. And one of the things I heard Howie say a number of times, and some of you have heard Howie, Howie say over years many times, is this. He'd say something like this. He'd say, you know, I called the local hospitals and I called the local doctors to just find out. And I found out that the mortality rate of people in the Monterey County is still 100%. What's the point? We're all going to die. This life ends for all of us. That's harsh, bad news. The good news is Jesus Christ rose again. And because he rose, he brings good news of hope for this life and forevermore. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And in 1 Corinthians 15, beginning in verse 1, uh, verse 1, we read this amazing passage. And so 1 Corinthians 15, 1, listen to these words and let God speak to your heart. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached. That's the good news that, that the Apostle Paul preached. I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved. Salvation comes through the gospel, the story of Jesus. If you hold firmly to the word I preach to you, otherwise, you believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance. I mean, this is the most important thing. Pay attention here. That Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. He died on the cross for our sins. That he was buried he died, he was buried for three days. And that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. And that he appeared to Cephas and then to the 12. And it goes on to talk about all of his appearances. He says, this is the good news. It's not that complicated. Jesus really lived. Jesus really died on the cross and took our sins. Jesus was really buried for three days. And on the third day, the one who was dead was now alive again, and he, and he burst forth from the tomb, bringing life and light and hope to us. Because Jesus rose from the grave, we have the good news of the gospel. And, and I've been, since I became a Christian, when I was 16 years old, I heard that good news for the first time in a way that made sense to me in my mind and my heart. I was like, I got it. And I've been trying ever since then to find the simplest, clearest way to tell the story of Jesus. I tried to distill it down into a way where a child could understand, where someone like I was, someone who didn't grow up in the church, could make sense of it very quickly. Someone may not agree or believe in it, but they would say, I understand what you're saying. So I want to share with you the gospel in eight words. Four little couplets of words. And it's really almost this back and forth between God and us. God and us. It always starts with God. So let me share those eight words with you. And if you're a follower of Jesus, they'll make sense. If you're not yet, you'll get to hear the message of Jesus in eight words. So here's the first two words. And it, and it, begin, and it begins with God. It begin, begins with, here's the first two words, God's love. For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son, that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have eternal or everlasting life. The beginning of the gospel is this. There is a God who loves you and who loves me, even when we're messed up, 
even when we don't love him back. It all starts with God. That's the first two words, God's love. You want to know the gospel? Understand this, God's love for you and for me. And then it kind of switches and it comes over to us. First it's God and and so then for us, it's our problem. The gospel says every human being has a problem. The Bible is just one little word for it, sin. We think thoughts we shouldn't think. We say things we shouldn't say. We do things we shouldn't do. We fail to do good things we should do. Anyway, we fall short of God's perfect plan, that's sin. That's our problem. And that problem actually separates us from God and it separates us from each other. We have a problem. So the gospel says God's love, but also our problem, the reality of sin. And then it goes back to God again because God's the one who can solve that problem. So we go back to God and that is, that is God's solution. The, the God who loves you, the God who knows your sin, he has a solution. He sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ. God with us, Emmanuel, to live in this world. To live with no sin and no wrong. This is God's solution. No sin, no wrong. And that Jesus died on the cross and took my sins on himself and your sins. And our wrong and our judgment. And he died in our place for our sins. And he rose again in glory. That's what we celebrate today. That's God's solution, to pay the price for us through Jesus Christ. So you're following these eight words? It's God's love, our problem, God's solution. Now it's back to us, all right? Now for us, it's it's our response. What will we do with this gift of God? You see, God's made a way to heaven. Easter is about the death of Jesus where he took our sins and buried them in the deepest sea. He rose again in glory. And God says to you and me, I offer you forgiveness. I offer you new life. I offer you hope. I offer you salvation through Jesus Christ. Our response is either to say, I don't want it. I don't need it. Or even not now. Not now is saying no, at least for now. Or saying I receive the gift of God. I receive the forgiveness of Jesus. Our response is to receive God's forgiveness and God's love and God's friendship and God's gift and say, I will receive Jesus Christ and I will take his hand and walk with him all the days of my life and forever. Our response is to say yes to Jesus or to reject Jesus. We get to choose and God doesn't force us. He invites us. Well, that's the gospel. That's the good news. Eight words. And you can make sense of the whole story of the Bible. God's love. Our problem, sin, and separation from God. God's solution, the free gift of Jesus. Our response to receive Jesus Christ. If you've done that, you're celebrating a risen Christ who's in your heart and your life right now. If you haven't yet done that, God offers that grace to you. And before the service is done today, I'll invite you, if you want to, to pray a prayer to receive that gift of the gospel of the good news. But that's good news, that God has given the gospel in Jesus Christ. It's amazing. It's glorious. So here's the question. Have you heard and embraced this amazing good news? If you hadn't heard it before, you've heard it today. There is good news of God's love and the price he paid on the cross to save us from our sins. The question is, what have we done with it? Have we received that gift? Because Jesus rose from the grave, there's more. Because he rose from the grave, there's more good news. Here's the second thing. We can be made alive forever and ever. Do you understand that through putting your faith in Jesus Christ, through accepting that gift of grace, the gift of the gospel, that that God says, "I, I, I will make you alive forever and ever. You become alive today in a new way, filled by my presence, and you are alive forever and ever. That's good news. Listen to these words from 1 Corinthians 15, beginning in verse 20. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all All will be made alive. Everyone who receives Jesus can be made alive. But each in turn, Christ, the first fruits, and then when he comes, those who belong to him. That's you and me if we've received Jesus Christ and received his grace. So here's the question. 
Do you live with a profound awareness that your eternity can be made secure in Jesus Christ? There's a lot in this life we can lose. We can lose money. We can lose our health. We can lose influence. We can lose people we love. But we cannot lose the salvation that God offers us in Jesus Christ if we accept it by faith. No one can take that from us. There's no portfolio that goes up and down. When you become a Christian, you belong to him and your eternity is secure. You belong to Jesus. That's good news. For all of you that have received Jesus Christ, understand this good news today. You belong to him. He is your savior and no one can take that from you. But there's more. We're not done yet. Because Jesus rose from the grave, death has been destroyed. Another way of putting it is this. Death is is dead. When Jesus rose from the grave, he broke the power of sin and hell and Satan and death. A lot happened on that resurrection Sunday, on that first Easter Sunday, and we live in the glory of that still today. Death has been destroyed. Death is dead. Listen to these words in 1 Corinthians 15. We'll read verses 25 and then 54 through 55. For he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. This is Jesus over all. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For he has put everything under his feet. Even death are under the feet of Jesus. Man, that's amazing. That's incredible. And then verse 54. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? There is no victory. There is no sting in death when you put your faith in Jesus Christ because death has been destroyed. I was trying to think about what this, how to picture this, and I thought about the idea of a rattlesnake uh, and, and the fear that many people have of snakes. As a matter of fact, I had uh, one of our staff members tell me uh, when, we, when I was planning this sermon and talking about this, I thought we were all going to be here in this room together instead of you in your homes. And somebody said, you cannot come into church with a snake in a box, and certainly not a diamondback rattlesnake. But, but I want you just to think, if you were here, if I said to you, uh, there's a diamondback rattlesnake in this box, a big adult one with fangs, and if I could just kind of, if I... Okay. So if I, if I said there's a diamondback rattlesnake, I was told by a couple of people, you couldn't do that if people were in the worship center because people in the balcony, some of them would leave the room. They're so terrified of snakes. Some of you might be at home right now going, I'm ready to leave the room and there's just a picture on the screen and the sound. But I can guarantee you it can't get to you from here. But if I told you, but what if I told you, okay, listen, there, there's a snake in here. It's a diamondback rattlesnake. It's an adult rattlesnake with big fangs. But here's one more thing you should know. It's dead. It's dead. I was out hiking in the Fort Ord Hills. I saw it. I picked it up with a stick, realized it was dead, took it home, and I put it in a box. Would you still be as afraid? No. Now, some of you that are really afraid of snakes go, kind of, but most people would say, well, if I know the snake's dead, I'm not afraid of it. Well, that's what death is like. We still see death around us, but for a follower of Jesus, death is dead. Its power is gone. We don't have to fear it anymore. When it comes to death, to me, it's like a dead snake in a box. I don't, I don't fear death. You say, you don't fear death? No. Other people ask me that. As a Christian, do you fear death? I don't fear death at all. If you say, well, well do you want to die? I'd say, well, I'd love to have more years to be with my wife who I love. I'd love to see my grandkids grow up. I'd love to enjoy some of the beauty of this world. But do I fear death? No. Death is dead. And eternal life has already begun because I put my faith in Jesus. And if you've done that, your eternal life has already begun. Now, by the way, it gets a lot better than this. The best of this world cannot touch the smallest light of heaven. It's going to be glorious. But here's the good news. Death is dead because Jesus rose from the grave. And we can walk in that truth and live in that truth and have absolute confidence. So here's the question. Do you understand that you can live with absolutely no fear of death? Do you realize that you don't have to live 
fearful of death. Put your faith in Jesus. And because he destroyed the sin of power and death, you don't walk in fear anymore. No one can take from you what matters most, salvation in Jesus Christ. And take his hand and walk with him all the days of your life. Here at Shoreline, we have a ministry called Grief Share, where people have lost a loved one or gone through a really deep time of loss. And they gather together and over a series of weeks, they study God's word and they're encouraged to really walk through their grief. And that grief is real and deep and personal. But always after that grief share class, we do another class all about heaven and the glory and the beauty of heaven. Why would you do a class about heaven after a grief share class? Because many people have lost loved ones and they're thinking to themselves about the reality that this, this life ends. And we have to understand that if you're a Christian, heaven is your home and the hope of heaven is real. And boy, there were times in the history of the church where Christians sang songs about the joy and the beauty and their anticipation of going to heaven. And for many years, we stopped singing those songs. And I think the reason we stopped singing those songs is because our world got so good and our lives so comfortable that we kind of felt like we're in heaven already. Not everybody, but some people had those kind of feelings. I think pretty much everybody right now would be ready to sing more songs about heaven because <laughs> the world's not as perfect as we thought it was. There's something about this moment that can guide our hearts back to heaven and acknowledging that, that we don't live for this world. We live for Jesus, and one day we'll see him face to face in glory. Because Jesus rose from the grave, everything changed. Here's the fourth thing that you need to know. Here's the fourth piece of good news for you. Because Jesus rose from the grave, I will have a new body beyond my comprehension. Do you understand that when you put your faith in Jesus Christ because he rose from the dead, he promises that one day we will have a new body, have a new heaven, a new earth, and everything will be made right. Listen to these words from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 35 to 36, and then we'll jump to verses 42 to 44. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come? How foolish. What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. When you sow, you do not plant the body that will be, but just a seed, perhaps of wheat or of something else. And then move to verse 42. So it will be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable, but it is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. And it is raised a spiritual body. Wow. Everything changes. What's this saying? It's saying that when this life ends, if you put faith in Jesus, here's good news. Life will get better and better eternally. Can you imagine a perfected, powerful, spiritual body with no pain and no aging? Can you imagine every tear wiped away, every pain gone, every sorrow stripped away? Because that's what God promises because of the resurrection. Because he rose, we have this hope of a new beginning. You know, I'm 57 years old now. I haven't always been 57. I, for a while, I was 56 and 55 and 54. I can remember back when I was in my 20s. And my body has changed over those years. In my 20s, it was the weirdest thing. I would wake up in the morning and go to get out of bed and I felt exactly like I felt the night before. No different. I'd go to sleep, feeling loose and comfortable. I'd wake up, pop out of bed. I'm 57 now. I wake up, and something happened while I slept. It was like the sleep fairy came and sprinkled dust on me, and all of a sudden, my neck got tight, and my shoulders got tight, and it wasn't happy dust. It was like tightening up the whole body. So I get out of bed, and I'm kind of like, oh, man, I got to stretch. I didn't have to stretch when I was in my 20s. My body doesn't work the way it used to. When I get out of a chair now, I make noises. I didn't in my 20s and 30s. I would just kind of pop out of a chair. Now I, I, I hear myself, I kind of oh, I make these groans. I'm like, where'd that come from? It came out of me. I, my, my body's changed. But, the, but, but God's word says there will come a day when we stand before God that we will have a new body. And the glory of that will be amazing. We can look forward to that. That's good news. Because he rose, he promises not just to rise us up, but he promises to give us a whole new body, a whole new beginning. And then finally, fifth, but not last, not least, but finally, because Jesus rose from the grave, all things will be made right. Because Jesus died on the cross, took our sins, 
was buried in the tomb and rose again in glory and broke the sin of hell and death and the enemy. We can say that all things will be made right. Listen to these words from the book of Revelation, the last, almost the end of the last book of the Bible. Revelation 21, beginning in verse 1. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. Prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people. And he will dwell with them and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. And there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. I am making everything everything new. That's the promise of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That God can make all things new and when we put our faith in him, a glorious thing happens. Everything changes. Because he rose. It's not just a fact of history. I believe the resurrection of Jesus Christ is a fact of history, but that's not all it is. It's so much more. It is our hope. It is our lifeline for eternity. And because he rose from the dead, we can have perfect connection and communion with God and healed relationships with each other. We can have communion with other people who we love and care about. We can walk in peace and freedom and hope that we cannot walk in if we don't understand what Easter is really about. Because he rose from the dead, everything has changed. Can you imagine no tears and perfect relationships? It's hard to imagine in this world because no relationship is perfect and there's tears that come. But Jesus says, because I've risen, I offer you a whole new life, now and forevermore. That's good news. And I will tell you this, anticipating heaven is a really smart thing to do. Looking forward to heaven, anticipating heaven, nothing wrong with it. It's not getting all caught up in, you know, people say, well, they're so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good. No, that's not true. Well, they're, they're all about pie in the sky, by and by. No, Christians should think about heaven because God has promised it and Jesus already won it for us. And if we put our faith in him, we can walk with him now in this life and enjoy his presence, but we will walk with him for eternity because he rose. That's good news. That's glorious news. So I wanna invite you today to consider responding to this good news. And I want to give you three different ways you can respond for three different groups of people. And I want to invite you in your home, in your apartment, wherever you are, just to kind of quiet your heart right now and just between you and God, which of these applies to you? Here's the first one. Some of you would say this. I never really heard the story of Jesus before in a way that made sense and it makes sense today. I understand that there's a God who loves me that I have a problem called sin and I'm separate from God, that God paid the price through Jesus' death and resurrection, and I need to respond and receive Jesus to start this new life and have everything made right. And some of you are saying, I want to do that today. If that's you, I want to pray with you right now. I want to lead you in a very simple prayer that you can quietly say to God. And I want to tell you something. If you would pray this prayer from your heart to the God who loves you, to the risen Lord Jesus Christ, you will be changed forever. If that's you right now, and let's, I want to ask everyone just to bow your head to join me in prayer. But if that's you particularly, just share these words with God. Dear God, I didn't understand the story of what you've done for me. I didn't realize that Jesus died and rose again. I'd not received you up to this point in my life. But I cry out to you today. This Easter Sunday, I give my life to you. This Easter Sunday, I confess all of my sins and all of my wrongs. I give them to Jesus. This Easter Sunday, I receive the forgiveness of Jesus and I take his hand and I will walk with him all the days of my life and for eternity 
And I give him praise for giving his life, for rising from the dead, and for offering me forgiveness. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer, God is entering your heart right now. The Holy Spirit's coming into your heart. And I'm going to give you a chance to respond in just a moment in a way that we can connect with you. But I rejoice with you. The Bible says that when one person puts their faith in Jesus, all of heaven celebrates and has a party. And heaven is celebrating right now because you just prayed that prayer and because Jesus Christ has entered your life. But there's another group of people I want to talk to. And that's all the people that have put their faith in Jesus Christ. You know you've received Jesus at some time in the past. But today, you want to say to God, God, I want to walk more closely with you and I want to walk in the power of the resurrection. I want to live more for Jesus and and become more like Jesus. If you're a Christian and you're saying, this Easter, I want to mark this day right now by saying, God, take me deeper in my faith and closer to you and make me more like Jesus. If you want to pray that with me, pray this right now. Dear God, for many of us, including me, we want to become more like Jesus. We want to love him more. We want to live with greater passion. We want to follow him more closely. We want to grow up in faith. So our prayer is that this Easter, we would walk more closely with Jesus. We would take our next step to walk more closely with, to love you, Jesus, more, and to live more for you, to become more like Jesus. Let this become a reality in our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, God is ready to move in your heart, and I'm going to give you something you can do in just a moment to take a next step forward. But I want to talk to one more group. I know there's a lot of people listening who would say, I'm not a Christian yet, and I wasn't ready to pray to receive Jesus yet, but I want to know more about Jesus. I want to dig deeper. I want to look into this whole Jesus thing. If that's you, I want to say a prayer for you, and I want to give you one way you can connect so that we can help you take some next steps to learn more about Jesus. Let me pray for you. Dear Jesus, for those people right now who are online, who are following this service, and they're saying, I'm not there yet. I've enjoyed the service. I like the music. It's starting to make sense, but I'm not there yet. God, I thank you for each of those people who are listening and watching this service. I thank you that you've led them today to where they are right now. And I pray that they would take some bold, courageous steps to research and study and learn more about Jesus so that if they discover this is true, they can then take that step to receive Jesus Christ. Be with those who are still investigating and checking out the Christian faith. Let them know that they are so welcome here at Shoreline among your people. And God, that your arms are open to them. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, here's what I want you to do. And I want to invite everyone who made one of those three commitments to do this one thing. Take out your phone right now, a cell phone, and if you would text this one word, Easter, Text the word Easter to this number. You see it on your screen, 831-221-0290. If you'll put that number in, it'll take you about 15 or 20 seconds. Put that number in, type in the word Easter right now, and send it. And you're going to get back a link immediately, I mean, within a couple of seconds. And if you will touch that link, it will open up a simple little opportunity to respond. And there's three bubbles. You either... Check the bubble that says, I, made a, I committed to follow Jesus today. Or the second one says, I'm a Christian. I want to grow to walk with the resurrected Jesus. Or I'm not a Christian, but I want to learn more about Jesus. You just hit the bubble that applies to you. And then just scroll down a little bit and you're going to see, just give us a little bit of contact information. We want to make one touch with you. If you'll fill that out, and if you'll put in your phone number, text, whatever we can, how we can get a hold of you, uh, email, and then send it. Here's our promise. We will respond to you only one time. We won't put you on a mailing list. We'll just one time respond. And there'll be a response to whichever of the ones, you, if you're a first time commitment, want to walk more closely with Jesus, or you want to learn more about Jesus, we'll give you an appropriate response. And then if you want to then interact with us, there are steps you can take. But if, if that's enough for you, that'll be great. But we want to give you some steps forward. If you've made a first time commitment to Jesus, and if you send that to us, we're going to send a note back and say, do you want a Bible? And we actually have a wonderful Bible uh, we've got set up with Amazon right now. And if you send us your contact information and a mailing address, we will mail you a nice, beautiful Bible. And we're going to send you a Bible reading plan to get you started. If you're a Christian and you want to go deeper, we're going to send you a link to a, a, a little self-assessment you can do that'll help you growing. If you are a person investigating the Christian faith and you respond back again, we want to connect you with some folks online who could help you walk on a journey of growth. So 
I hope this Easter that you take a next step forward, whatever that step is. Because Christ is risen and because he died on the cross, because he rose, everything changed. We look forward to interacting with you. I want to give you two invitations before I send you off with an Easter word of blessing. First, I want to say to you, if you need prayer for anything, will you text in, will you call in, will you use the number that's on the screen there, or will you you do a live chat and let us know how we can be praying for you because we want to pray for you. And if you're new at Shoreline, You'll see that it says info at Shoreline Church. I think is what it says on your screen. There's an there's a, a email there. You can send us a note and say you're new and we want to answer any questions you have about the church. And we hope when we're back gathering together in this place, you can join us, but we want to connect with you any way we can. Well, this Easter, I hope you understand that because he rose, everything's changed. So I want to send you off with a word of blessing. You can stay seated. You can stand up. You can turn your hands like this to receive, but just receive this word of blessing. May Jesus Christ the risen, glorious Savior. Fill your heart, fill your home, fill your life. Because he is risen, everything changes. Will you walk in the resurrection glory and presence and power of Jesus Christ? Amen. God bless you. Happy Easter.